3D printing threads is a really weirdly tricky part of design because it seems so easy, but it is full of unexpected nuances that will make or break your project. Hey guys, I'm Jake and welcome back to CAD class where this week we're gonna be showing you guys the why and how of CADing threads for 3D printing. Throughout our book, every single time that we want you guys to do a thread that is going to be 3D printed like the geocache hide or a really accurate thread for something like the metric bolt project, we always have you guys do the triangular revolve cut method to make it really easy to screw this bolt in place. And for years, I have been modifying threads that I knew were gonna be 3D printed and turns out was a huge waste of time. In one of our last videos where we designed the bolts for our completely 3D printed 3D printer, we got a great comment saying that you don't need to go through all of the steps to make that triangular revolution. In fact, you only need to add an offset to the thread and then chamfer it to get essentially the same results. I had never heard of this trick before and after a quick test in CAD, it did in fact work, but I wasn't 100% sure that it would work in real life. So in this video, we're gonna be going through the positives and negatives of this process in CAD and then testing the 3D printed versions. Let's start out this experiment with a control, a completely uncut thread. This bolt is simply a cylinder with a modeled thread applied to it in CAD. It doesn't matter what thread type it is or size, all you need to know is that it has a flat top. The problem with this in manufacturing is that it's incredibly hard to screw these types of bolts into nuts or threaded holes because there's no real nice lead in of the thread. Because the surface of the bolt and the nuts are completely flat, they can plainly move over each other and need to be perfectly lined up axially so they can get screwed into each other. That's why on all bolts and nuts, you see they have a little cutout on their top edge so they can be lined up with each other and screwed in much easier. Traditionally on a metal lathe, if you wanted to make a bolt, you would start out by chamfering the outer edge so you could make the thread with a die. Or you could perform a threading operation where you use an insert to cut the threads of the bolt and then add in the chamfer after the fact by holding the file at a 45 degree angle, just taking off the edge. They both give you exactly the same outcome in real life, but in CAD, not so much. The other part about thread cutting that a lot of people don't think about is tolerance. You may have noticed in CAD that threads have a class. That's the amount of tightness or looseness that a thread has when you're screwing them together. If you take a male and female set of threads that are exactly the same size, they won't actually screw together perfectly, especially in 3D printing. The solution is that you need to offset the male or female face just a little bit to allow them to be screwed together. And that amount of tolerance that you give indicates the amount of slop that thread may have. We found that a negative 0.4 millimeter offset is the golden number for 3D printing to give you the best fit on the four faces of a thread. Now, a common question that I get when people run into this section in our course is, why can't I just add a chamfer to the edge of a bolt and then add the thread under it? The problem is that thread is only applied to the cylinder, not the chamfer. This leaves you with a bolt with no start or no entry into the threads. It looks correct, and for a simple CAD model, it's completely fine to use this method because nobody's going to be designing a custom M3 bolt from your design. They're just gonna to go to the hardware store and pick up a normal bolt. Quick tangent, if you are working on a design that has hundreds or thousands of bolts, then please do not use the modeled bolts, use the decals. This will save you a huge amount of computation power. Your computer is doing a lot of work to render all of the threads that you either don't see or don't care about. So when you're designing a project, just stick with the decaled bolt and save yourself all of the lag. Back to the old way, if you want to make a thread in CAD that works in real life, then you do need to cut away that top edge. My method was to make a sketch of a right triangle, dimension it to about four millimeters, dimension the location of the triangle so it lines up with the top of the bolt and the outer diameter of the thread, and use the bolt's axis of revolution to perform a revolve cut. Once this is done, you can see the beginning of the thread ends at a point that is inside of a chamfer. And this method works pretty well, but it uses three features, the thread, the sketch, and the revolve cut. Meanwhile, the offset method only uses two features, the thread that has the built-in offset and the chamfer. But why is this important? When you're working in CAD, making the final model isn't good enough. 
The real skill is how efficiently can you design it. If you take the final exam of a CAD class in university, you'll be given a three view drawing of a complex model and the test is to see just how efficiently can you recreate that model. If you go over the amount of steps that's allotted, you fail. The reason behind the madness is that the amount of features in your timeline is a direct correlation to how efficient of a designer you are and how easy that file is if you were to hand it off to a peer. When Tesla's Cybertruck was first unveiled, there was a fun little challenge in the CAD community to see who could redesign the basic construction in as few steps as possible, which is a really fun application of this skill. So going from three steps to two steps doesn't really seem like that big of a deal. But what happens if you're taking a project that can go from 300 steps to 200 steps? This means that you can finish faster, which costs less money, and potentially your project can start days earlier. Start off in your CAD program of choice, Autodesk Fusion in our case, make a simple cylinder, apply a thread to it, uncheck full length, make an offset of one millimeter, go to modify, chamfer, select the top edge, and select a chamfer that is greater than the offset dimension. The larger the chamfer, the more of a point that you'll get on your bolt. But even at 1.1 millimeters, just 0.1 millimeters over the offset, you can see that the start of the thread is indeed a point and is embedded in the chamfer correctly. If you look at the triangular revolve cut and the offset cut method side by side, you can see that they are very similar, but how do they work in real life? After printing out some simple nut and bolt tests, you can see this method totally works and works well and will now be a new tip and trick that we add to the second edition of our book. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you want to pick up a copy of our book and start learning Autodesk Fusion, then you can find the Amazon link in the description below. And as always, we give away the entire book completely for free on our website at cadclass.org. If you guys want to apply this new trick on threads to a project, then check out the Geocache Hide project in chapter two, all about mechanical design. A big thank you to Jorg the Elder for this awesome trick. And if you guys have any other tricks you love to use in CAD, then let us know in the comments below. Cheers everyone, and we'll see you next week.